March 2018, we went to the Insights Conference. And while we were there, we went and saw a demonstration from Cambridge... Sensory Services. Sensory Services. Now, it's not sensory as in uh, sensory room equipment or anything like that. It's sensory as in... Um, Adapted equipment that, that help you live your life better. Yeah, for people with sight, hearing loss and things like that. Um, we want to apologize for a loud noise. There were obviously since this was a demonstration and not a talk, there was they were just start, starting to set up a lunch. So there was a lot of people in the background just walking around talking. So we, how was the vibe? At times it can get quite loud. There is a point where there's like dogs barking and things yeah, like that because so, there was so. quite a lot of support dogs um, in the in a very very small area. Um, and I think during lunchtime they were kind of giving the dogs a break and stuff from their duties and that. But I, it is a demonstration, not a talk, so you would expect some noise. Um, unfortunately, it was picked up quite a lot. However, you could still hear a lot and its relevance and, and everything we found out. It was just such amazing equipment, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we learned a, a, a lot of cool little tricks like what. Well, I'm not sure what we were going to get into it, but you can, you can see it. I like the, the basket bit. The chip, the chip basket yeah. for doing your vegetables yeah. when you've got grip problems. And I really um, like the um, app for um, the magnifier, magnifier and, yeah. and telling you what's in front of you and things like that. And I specifically was trying to look for things for sight because I have a lot of equipment for my hearing. But we don't have much at home for my sight problems. Um, and um, also I know that there are other viewers that are interested in that from our channel. And so I wanted to bring that information to them. I wanted to bring that information to you guys too. So that is what we did. We had a long chat with this lovely lady called Julie. Yes, I bet, yes, Julie, yes. Um, and she spent a long time talking to us about everything, and she was absolutely amazing and very knowledgeable. She knew exactly yes, what she, she was talking about, and any question I had, I do have to apologize too. There are times I over talk her, I don't mean to. Um, I was struggling to hear, so sometimes if I was looking at something, I didn't wasn't lip reading her, so I didn't realize she was talking. So I apologize for those moments. Um, and it kind of changes the conversation a little bit, but it kind of all fits anyway. So, here's the video. Right here. I kept my eyes are catching the jump, but I'm going to let you tell me to find Okay, um, I've got a range of stuff. Some really low tech, to be honest. It's been around for years, but works. Um, so people with low vision, what makes a real difference, even with all the tech, high tech stuff, is getting the flight. Um, use of colour contrast, uh, making things bigger, either just by getting large print in the first place, uh, using magnification, so bigger, bolder, brighter, using colour, just makes a different way to work with the um, for donkey's years, my favourite is orange, so imagine a crocodile, and although you know you've got a range of temperatures, normally it's 180, so we'd mark, we'd put one of these on 180. Oh, the cooker! Yeah, so a very bad drawing of a crocodile, and I've put one orange bump on at 180, and a black one, that would be on the dial, so that would move round, and when the black one's next to the orange one... So instead of me doing this... <laughs> Some people, it's kind of what works, there's always options. So for some people, what works for them is to bend down with a magnifier and see what the is. And if that works and that's what works and that's fine, we need to pay. But we always offer another option, which is this marking. Either because then you can see, or sometimes they use the dial and they use my feel as well. You see, I've, I've put a magnifier on my arm. Um iPad now, and quite often when I'm going around, I'll leave the magnifier on the iPad so I can see a bit better, um, whereas I would normally wouldn't be able to see things, and that helped me a lot. Um, but it's one thing that we've noticed with our, our viewers, there's a lot of with sight problems, and magnifiers come up a lot. 
what they do. I mean, optical magnifiers, again, been around ages, and the ones that they make now are lovely. They're light and weight. They've got LED lights included. So, again, because That's you handy. have to get close, it makes you it really dark and you've got the shadow. Yeah. So, by having an inbuilt light, suddenly it's got light in there. Um, but the trouble with magnifiers, optical ones, is the stronger you need, the smaller they get. So, what everybody wants is a lovely big magnifier, but they want it strong that little wee one there. Um, physically, that's not possible. Um, don't ask me the physics of it, but it's just impossible. Um, the alternative now, technology-wise, is to go over to video magnification. Um, it used to be spending three, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred pounds on a video magnifier. Um, again, my phone. You mentioned the magnification. There's one that's come out that I'm quite fond of. I've got one Claro Mag X, which is that one there, so it's only on time for one at the moment. Top right increases the magnification, goes up to time 16. Yeah. Yeah. Middle at the top changes it, changes the um, from white on black to black on white. So do you pay for your one? That one's free. Yeah. And that one's what called? Claro Mag X. Claro. Oh, Claro is pretty good. That's yeah. the they the ones yeah. that do my reader and everything yeah. as well. The groovy thing is it will take colour away as well. So I had a lady that I worked with who got given a load of pink toilets for Christmas. Um, pink bottles, dark pink writing. Even with magnifier, she couldn't make anything out. The bottom right takes all the colour away. And makes it oh wow! Right, and you can add on a colour overlay. Which, yellows. like you can see with my glasses, I have a blue overlay which helps me with my dyslexia That's a blue one there. and I think yeah it's quite bright but again the you fact that there's choices it. on there um, wow so this one's making it bigger now I torch as well, so. want that one because this one's quite <laughs> when you search for it because it's maybe is it that one I'm talking about no that one's available yeah for um, Android and and iOS um, I was wondering that yeah I've got it on both my phones I've got an iPad my iPhone in the other pocket. But, um, yeah, it's about the best magnification app that I've come across personally so far. So. That's amazing because I mean, the one I've got, it was just a free one, um, but it and you can, all you can really do with it is change the. I'm not gonna let me do it now. My hands are not very good. It lets me change how far to zoom in and out. Uh -huh. That is literally all I can do with it, and then I can take a snapshot if I want. Yeah, but. It's worth trying that one. That one sounds yeah. a lot better. The thing with apps is that technology is changing all the time, so they're catching up. Yeah. Um, the other one, depending on how old your iPad is, um, this one needs update 10.0 onwards. Um, and it's an iPhone app that you get it on iPad if you toggle that setting when you go into App Store or access it via the website. Okay. Um, it's called Seeing AI. Um, and it's an app that uses the camera to recognise things it's talking to me now. Person, it's on person setting. So it's oh. the face and how far away it is it moved over there. Zero faces. Zero faces. A bit too far away. So it informs you if someone's coming up by the I wonder if that would tell me if bollards are in front of me. <laughs> if you're ready to be offended, possibly. It doesn't get the age right always. So it makes a little tune while it's... <laughs> Miles off. <laughs> the age... It takes a bit of a while to get. Sometimes it's dead accurate, sometimes it's younger, which is awful, sometimes it's older, which is not. Um, the lighting makes a difference and the expression seems to make a difference. And if you smile, it knocks your ears off. <laughs> so there's a, a face setting, um, there's a product setting. <laughs> The document reader is quite groovy. Uh, so if you've received a letter in the post, so it tells you there's no edges visible, just basically move back, move back, move back. Move back. 
It's taking a picture, it's processing it. Now it's going to come up with the scan result. The bottom left is play. Cambridge to County Council Sensory Services. Service Information Sensory Services works with adults and children who are deaf, blind, deaf, hard of hearing, registered surveillance sighted bird, sighted oh my bird goodness. or experiencing vid. So for some people, they can read and magnification lets them read a little bit sometimes. I've got to write that out. Now. Having the option of reading to you. Sometimes Just over pages. Just over pages. Just over pages. Uh, you're right there anyway, so just... That, cause how many times have we said as well about getting it so that something can read things for me? Yeah. Yeah. There's other apps that do just that, that have been around quite a while. Um, but and that's a free app? That's, that's a free that's app? That's a free app. Wow. That's, that's called Seeing AI. So C-S-E-E-I-N-G and then capital A, capital I, as in Artificial Intelligence AI. And that will work with iPads and Android? IPad, uh, just iPad and iPhone. iPad and iPhone. With update 10.0 or later. Uh, it's got short text setting. I've got the short text here, really. So it's good for light packets. He could just set yellow sailing boat at or just see he could just see a small yellow sailing boat in the plus twenty D six X. Optima Low Vision Services Limited ninety boxes. It's, it's really tiny print at the bottom. <laughs> I can't even see that print, it's that's pretty impressive. Setting, which is uses a barcode. Um, I've got the box from my um, light. So when it's on the product, it will do nothing while you sort of hold different parts of the box. But when it finds the barcode, it goes pink. So it tells you, it tells you what it is. Wow. So That's pretty impressive. So document, uh, short text document, product, uh, person you tried, currency, so it does uh, banknotes. Seam is a bit of a weird one. And here it will just say something scoring like. Uh, yesterday we was at a training course and it said two people sitting behind a desk, one using a laptop. It's got quite specific sometimes. So useful for someone with very low vision going into a room wanting to know is this the room with the bed in, is it the bedroom or is it the room with the sofa in, so that yeah. you know which one room from the other. So would it recognise like things like, you know when you're going along outside like bollards and things like that, I never notice them, I always in a Probably not, because you'd have to keep taking pictures all the way along. Right, so it's dependent on you taking yeah, your pictures. Because yeah. that's why I tend to use the magnifying glass, so I can see it, so I've got enough time to get around it. Because I'm always trying to focus as well on the other people around me. And it's, it's a lot of things that people don't realise that the wheelchair users are doing constantly, is watching everybody around because they just walk right in front of you. And then you don't also have the time to look at your environment. And then when you add sight impairment and things like that into it, it just makes it a little bit more difficult. Which is why I use the magnifier when I'm outside. It's a really good line. idea, actually. We've worked, my colleague in particular worked um, for a while down in, in, in a neuro rehab centre down in Milton Keynes. And I know she worked with several power chair users with varying degrees of vision impairment, often on the radio stroke, and stroke. Um, so I know she did long cane training for people. Extra Long cane, the long cane training. So, um, because it just uh, trying to adapt that, I know she had a lady with quite severe CP and she tried to uh, try and find options because she couldn't use a cane because she had a really good startle reflex, so the cane would have flying through the air. So, that wasn't an option, um, but something like having a magnifier might have been an option. It wasn't back then before I passed around.
so that's sort of the beauty of our job if you like. We're always looking for options and sometimes you know, several and you've got a nice choice. Sometimes it might be two or three, but it's still nice to have options and try well, it was actually, and things. Um, I started using the camera first. Before I used the thought about getting a Mac file, I was actually just using the camera and zooming in. Um, and I had the camera up just to ready to catch photos when I saw something I liked the look of. And I just realised actually I'm finding this a lot easier to see where I'm going. And it would help maybe if I looked at magnifying glasses to help me to see where I'm going. So that's why I went for the magnifying glass because I found through the camera actually I was finding it a lot easier. And that's what's opened up because now on iPods and iPhones, newer ones, there's now a magnifier built in. I found it, discovered it online the other day. Yeah. Um, so from the, once you turn a magnifier on the settings, if you triple click, it comes up as an option there. So I switch that on. It's a much simpler version. That's got yeah, I think I've got one, but it comes up right at the top and I'd prefer it full screen. And there's a just a slider. Um, yeah. that increases the magnification um, and I got someone using that the day to watch telly with because they didn't want to move the chair I mean we tell people you can have a chair right on top of television you can be that far away the old wives tale is rubbish you can sit that far on television but she didn't want to because people have their chairs where they want them and you, yeah. it's easy for us to say move your chair but um, but it worked so now she can sit in a chair next to a fireplace where she always has um, she's going to try and get a family member to get an iPad clamp into yours with a flexi arm and a clamp so she can clamp it to the table she's got next to a chair. Uh, where do we get those clamp things from? Um, I saw them on the internet for about nine, ten pounds. My one, uh, you can get them from a special place as well. We got my one, it's very expensive actually, this place. For, for specifically, for, especially if you're looking to attach them on the wheelchairs. Where's that place called? Oh, it's Inclusive Designs, I think it is. Yeah. But the actual frame costs more. I mean, they do a lot of stuff. They do tons of sensory stuff. There are apps for the iPads and Android. They do tons. I mean, the catalog is that thick. But it's more geared towards um, not sensory as in like sight and eyes, but it's more to do with learning disabilities and, and like, communication. There's a lot of crossover, and that's what we found in yeah. our job. You know, things that are made for physical, physical disability suddenly, not just for um, sight loss, but older people that have got a sight loss and have got a bit of arthritis, suddenly something that's bigger and easier to hold. It's yes. made for sight loss, but it works. Yeah, you know, no, I totally agree. That's things. why that caught my, that jug caught my eye, is because yeah. I instantly saw the big handle on it. The, the, yeah. That's on there. And it's very hard to find jugs with grip handles. Yeah, and that's a nice soft feel grip handle as well. Yeah. yeah. And it's weighted quite nicely, so once you hold the handle, it's easier to get the jug in a way. If you've got that sort of half full with liquid, you want it weighted so that it's... Now that is handy, so you can actually properly see the... Because um, even you struggle to see them sometimes. No, my problem is... No surface is tall enough, so I'm bending down trying to get my, my, my eyes at the level to read it. Our kitchen's more designed for me than Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> almost kneeling on the floor in the kitchen. Yeah. But no, it is, you don't see them do you? with good grips very often. Um, or they are also There's another one they make. I think it's I think it's Oxo that make it. I could be wrong. But have a look on the internet. There's a jug that's very clever, and it's. Um, it's got a sloping part. We've got that. I find that so one that you difficult. Can look down and see what yeah, yeah, I find that difficult that's to my whisk favorite in. One. It's good to measure, but it's difficult to whisk in and, and mix things up because of the slope. So it's great for measuring, but you kind of then get, have to. Yeah. They do a talking job. I'm not being cobalt. I was doing. Oh, wow. Couple called Cobalt do lots of talking. Everything you buy from Cobalt talks. Talking microwaves, talking kettles, talking scales. Yeah. Uh, talking scales are quite groovy. Uh, and again, you can zero it. So you can put flour in, zero it, add sugar in, zero oh. it, add bicarb, zero it, add chocolate drops. You know, so you can zero each time. And it will do pounds, ounces, ounces. 
and you can use any drug on it. So it comes with a lovely drug, but if you've got one that you like to use that you can hold easier or deliver easier, you can put your own drug on there zero. You know, I've had a lady who was struggling to weigh, she wants to weigh her breakfast cereal because she's on a diet, and she's diabetic as well. Might want to get the right amount of brown flakes, I think it was. Um, she was messing about trying to weigh, weigh them and then pour them into a bowl and said, put your breakfast bowl on the scale, zero it, then you weigh them and then they're already in there. Okay. <laughs> so there's options for yeah. options, which is, you know. Um, uh, another thing you were saying, like you were saying about the crossover between one disability to another and the sight and the grip and things. And I've noticed something that I have a home and I have them in different colours. I only brought them in different colours for the pure fact that I wanted the different colours. No other reason. But I use them for my grip for the saucepan. Yes. For the saucepan handle. Yeah. So how would you connect that for, for side problems? How would that help somebody with side problems? It's the fact that it's a bright colour. Most pan handles tend to be grey or black because they blend into the modern kitchen. And yet these come in blue so, and orange and green and yeah. Yeah, so someone's got two pans on the go, they come in two different colours. The fact that it's bright, um, the fact that it feels different. I mean, they're made really because they're, they're heat proof. Because some pan handles get really, really hot. Really? I thought they really were hot. actually made to help with gripping. <laughs> that was I think they're multi-use. They're multi <laughs> but I mean, that costs two pounds from... Get you can get them um, yeah, from all sites, all places nowadays. You can get them on Amazon, and I think they started in Better Way, to be honest. I'm not sure, but um, they were not two pounds when they first came out. <laughs> Big bold bright is what we tend to go for. We, 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 we. It, is, it is interesting how the crossover comes. Yeah. Very interesting. That's probably why I've managed with my sight deterioration more than I realised because of, I've already got things in place for my grip. Yeah. And without realising it, it's already been. And of course, the manufacturers are a bit careful. They know that if they make something and there is this crossover, why make it in the, in black when they know if they make that in bright orange or bright yellow or bright blue or red, suddenly a different market might use that same product. So they're, 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 they're kind of, they're hedging their bets, yeah. but the benefit to everybody is then there's more and more of that. Yeah. Yeah. Clever. Because the other thing too is you could put him on, because we, we tend to, I, I like to put him on the source pack, he hates it. Um, but if you have them on the source pack in different colours, you know which one's which by the colour. And you don't have to sit pulling everything out the cupboard trying to work out which is which. Change it's so very cheap and it was about £1.50 for the post. So it's a chip pan in the basket. Older people, people who don't stay out in problems, and people with sight loss, if you try and, if you boil your veg in a pan, or pasta, and then you're faced with trying to drain the thing, trying to work the whole heavy pan up with the hot water and pour it on, put your heavy veg or wet pasta you're cooking in a basket, put it in hot water, when it's ready, you lift just the basket. I didn't even really thought that. Give it a shake, put it onto a plate, leave your hot water in your pan, go and have your lovely meal, come back to a pan with cold water in, it's far easier and safer to handle. Just for a, a two basket. Never ever for that. No. I've never been able to because I can't even with my gadget kitchen, it's too unsafe. I could not take that pan and drive my chair to the sink. It's not possible. And you end up wearing wearing the food and getting yeah. wet as well, yeah. And burnt for the water. So again, so it's just a simple, cheapy thing. On our bee now sell because the trick with this, you've got to have a saucepan that's big enough to, to fit this because you can't really get these in, in many different sizes. I mean, it's in that sort of size. Um, but on our bee sell one all in one. It's a big, tall saucepan with a big, tall, thinner basket. So it's got more capacity than that. The two of us. So I, that's one of my favourite yeah. things to show people. Like, that is like an amazing you know, idea. That is an amazing it's idea. It's tech, you know, it's just applying the common sense and another option. So it's almost taking a task apart. To, okay, what's the dangerous bit about what I'm doing? What, what's the bit I want to change? I don't want to have to lift a whole saucepan full of hot water. How can I change that? Yes, you can get whole the spoons. And I don't need you to do it for me anymore. Once we've got to go buy one of them. Yeah. There you go. And then I can do it all by myself. 
<laughs> he doesn't like that idea. He's like, no, I like helping you in the kitchen. I know you can't get it by yourself because you'll you, you, probably drop the plate trying to get it somewhere. No, I just take that to the plate. Yeah, no, you, you got to get the plate somewhere else to eat. That's when you drop it. But I still it. get some accomplishment because I can yeah. knock it out, put it on the plate by the side of the cooker and then just get you to lift the plate with it onto the other side of the kitchen. I still drain the vegetables myself. Yeah. This is a bag that's working with a old lady at the moment. Uh, she can walk with a frame, but not much. So, uh, she certainly can't stand up to chop veggies. But one thing she wants to do, when a friend visits every Sunday to cook a Sunday lunch for her and the family, uh, she wants to help out. Now we've got as far as she can peel carrots and peel parsnips and she can chop carrots and she can use a pair of kitchen scissors to chop beans. Last couple of years, parsnips she can't chop because she hasn't got the physical strength, they're just too they are tough. So it's limited, but there's quite a few things that she can now do, which means that we be in the kitchen together, chatting away, she's doing carrots, they're doing the potatoes. That's what else. we like doing. And it's, you know, it's getting that balance. You're not doing everything, but you're doing the bits that you can. The yeah. bits that you can't, you, you delegate to somebody else. Yeah. You know? I think that's where we're quite good together yeah. in the kitchen, because we balance it out yeah. between the two of us. And that's a trick to it. And that's, that's balance. You know, I don't, I don't, if, I, if I eat beef on Sunday, I don't go out and kill them. The cow and do it myself. I get I get Tesco's or whatever to do yeah. most of the hard work. I just cook the beef. Oh, they do an easy so work I, actually. Yeah. It's the farmers so that do hard work. Well, I'm relying on the people to do it. I don't care me in the car. I just drive it. I am a mechanic doing all that stuff. So nobody's fully independent. If you want to. Yeah, no, that is true. That is true. That's a good way of looking do, at it. We each do bits, bits that we can, the bits that we can't. We either do the bits or we get the to pay someone to do it, or change how we Thank you so much. I, you've even taught me new things, which I'm pretty impressed with. And we're going to be able to share this now with lots of other people. Thank you for that. Much. And spreading the word. We are. People, lots of people know about OTs. Yes. Uh, I contacted the housing association the other week wanting um, someone's um, light fix, the DIR light, to come on as a process of that. And the response was, we need a referral from an OT, we don't take it from anybody else. One phone call to explain, actually, rehab officers or rehab workers with vision impairment our job role's been around for many years. Um, and we're like, we're like OT sufficiently, but they're not. There's lots of people that have But most areas have us. There might yeah. be only one or two of us, but we're, we're there. Because I had you guys, same department, but in a different council, and I came over here, and I was moved from one department to the other. They talked to me, they talked to each other, and right, I'm coming to you, but so we're going over to her own flat. She's going to need everything she's got adapted for him, and they agreed exchange like the equipment will come with me um, and so that would have that happen with the sensory team but it also happens separately with the OT so yeah you guys should be recognized and acknowledged just as much as OTs and physiotherapists we keep shouting. Like me this morning, I was the idiot at the back when he was going through what's available. And I was like, Sandra, you forgot me. When Graham was doing his introduction. We get forgotten. Well, we really appreciate this because I know quite a lot of um, the things that we're facing is especially with the site. And so going through those magnifiers, I know a lot of people are going to really appreciate that. So I can't thank you enough for it. And